Over the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about why I started to design and build my own tool carousel and give an overview of each prototype, finishing with the next iteration and design. In the coming presentations, I will cover topics individually like motors and controllers, tool measuring, dust shoes, or dust hoods as some people call them. This presentation should be understood as my opinion and can be revised in the future as I evolve my understanding on the topic. For a list of equipment and providers, please see the notes in this presentation. I apologize now for the nomenclature used in this video. Things like tool holder, tool clamps, tool forks, or tool holder forks, carousel table, and the like are all confusing and may not be correct. In 2019, after I had finished assembly of my first large gantry style CNC machine, I, I began to try to figure out where to stick the uh, static tool post and as it would happen the cross members were just not in a place that would allow them to be out of the way if you will so I, I was almost losing 20 something inches 15 20 inches off of the top end of my machine to mount the tools I paid all this money for a five foot by 10 foot machine, but I was really getting only a five foot by eight machine. And that kind of started to bug me. And I, I was like, why not just go build a tool carousel? Or, or actually at the time I was thinking more of a, like a, a Haas or a Doosan and the chain or the, the big wheel. And I was like, well, I'll just make one of those myself. And so I began to do a little bit of research and settled with just a carousel because I had an old rotary table that I, I was using on my uh, X3 conversion as the fourth axis. And it was just sitting there and it wasn't being used at the time. So I, I sat down with it in front of the computer and turned on Fusion, started doing a riff on it, 3D printed some parts. Lo and behold, I have a, a tool carousel sitting there and it actually worked pretty well. What I didn't know at this time though was the z-axis on my machine, the brake that keeps the uh, z-axis from falling after it's powered off, was actually beginning to fail. And it was creating a condition where it would lose just a few steps every so often when it was uh, doing a wrap it up and i didn't know it at this time and so i i was constantly just tearing up the tool holder clamps and putting a lot of stress on the the plywood and the plywood was warping and bending and i wasn't quite understanding what was going on i, th I thought most of it was in my code but the biggest driver for change was the fact that the tool holder clamps were non-standard and I was starting to find uh, pre-made or a standardized ISO 30 tool holder clamps that I could purchase. And it was at that point I started rethinking about how I was designing the actual table on the carousel. In version 2, I tried to eliminate as many 3D printed parts as I could and start going towards the standard ISO 30 tool holder clamps that I could get off of eBay and Amazon. The body of the, the carousel was a 16 gauge sheet metal. The design was actually very stable. It wasn't quite as adjustable as I would have liked it. it it was hard to level and get parallel with the, the spindle. But otherwise, it was a solid performer. And this was actually the, the configuration that lasted for about six months. It, it had very little drawback other than the, the flexing of the plywood and the unevenness. This particular carousel table was actually warped. <laughs> so I ended up having to touch off on the top of the pull stud and figure out the, the differences from, you know, tool slot one and then do it just like you, you do in the tool table where you, you calculate the difference in height. And I was looking at it after I was finished with it, I was like, well, I got to fix this because this isn't good. The table should be flat and I shouldn't be making these kind of uh, adjustments when docking. But as fate would have it, this is when the Z-axis brake would fail and I would actually destroy this, this carousel. At first I was questioning whether or not it was my code. And uh, after talking with the uh, OEM for my machine, 
they determined that there might be something wrong with the axis and and so I, I took it off the machine and sent it back to them and they discovered that the brake on the z-axis was failing and causing the machine to lose steps during rapids so it took me a while to get everything back together and during that time i, I moved on to exploring using a geneva drive or a geneva gear type system and try to replace the shareline rotary table for version three i really put a little more polish into it than i should have it was one of those things where I, I thought maybe this was it this was going to be the one that answered all my problems however it was very apparent from the moment that i got all the tools mounted onto the the carousel that there was an issue with how I designed the Geneva drive. I probably will return to it because the science behind it is sound. My implementation was not. However, some of the advances here were the tool carousel table itself was now metal and I had started cutting the uh, slot numbers into it and from there I was trying to make a, a little more metal if you will a little more rigid however it was just the bad design of the Geneva mechanism in there that would not take the weight of the tools when they were mounted version 4 was the first fully retracting carousel the carriage ran on uh, linear rails and extended off of the back of the CNC machine and were unsupported. Once I had loaded it up with some tools, I discovered that was not such a good design. As it would deploy and retract, it would bounce, and that was causing some problems when it was uh, trying to dock with the tool. So I looked at it and realized my mistake and reversed the, the direction of travel on it and recut the side risers on the, the carriage to be S-shaped instead of U-shaped and that gave me version 5. Version 5 is currently on the machine and performs really well. There is still somewhat of a, a bounce or a, a jitter during motion of the carousel and I believe that's because the, the rails are too thin. So I, I'm on version 6, I'm going to move up to 12 millimeter rails and I'm going to redesign the carriage and put it as close to center mass as I possibly can and, and see if that improves the amount of excess movement that occurs when it's being retracted or deployed. One thing I am going to try on version 6 is to start using a quarter inch plate of steel instead of the 16 gauge sheet metal and see if that improves the rigidity of the carriage and the connecting parts. The next video in this series is going to be over the controller and the motors used on the carousel. This will also include the sensors like the pressure sensors and the proximity sensors for homing. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you want to follow the progress on the tool carousel design and implementation. Thank you for watching.